he does give the old story of like, you know, oh, I grew up in Glasgow, which I know he did, and, you know, he's, he's kind of, he's probably got something of the Scottish inside him, I'm not quite sure what it is there. How Scottish? Not at all. <laughs> is he Scottish? It's good because it's almost like a hidden weapon because I sound English, but actually I'm pretty Scottish. I don't remember a great deal about being a child at all. I have a problem with long-term memories, so, and which is kind of ironic being a photographer because it's all about, photographs are about memories to such a large degree. And um, for me, it's like I don't, I don't have a lot of photographs of me as a child. And um, I don't have a great deal of memories that are in any way photographic. It's something that when you start to try and place your life in a, 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 any type of context, you start to look back and think, could I, could I write a biography or could I, could I, be, could I you know, put all this in, into some sort of order? And I just don't have it. And when I read other people's biographies, I think, how do they remember all of this stuff? Because I don't remember anything. It's Kate's murder, mate. Even when my parents tell me stories about what I did as a child, I don't remember being there even. Oh, no. Yes. I love it. <laughs> oh, I like sexy Batman. <laughs> I, like most people in Britain, love to romanticise about the past. And the great thing about Rossi is you feel like you've stepped back into the past. It doesn't feel like it's any different from, from any other, any, you know, from when I was here before. I'm, I do recognise so much of it as being the same. And looking round, it's like you can understand why you'd come here. It's so beautiful. Dancing by in someone else's arms. Watching my son grow up over the last 10 years, I've seen him be Superman and be Batman and be Robin and be Zorro and, you know, I don't remember being nine years old and running around in a Batman outfit, so why don't I do it now? And hopefully those images will, I don't know, give me something to show him. And also, he is such a laugh. If I, if I dress up in a costume, my son finds that incredibly funny. So, and I, I, I guess I find it incredibly funny as well, in a very sad way. <laughs> Rankin shoots an enormous amount of celebrities and he's spending quite a lot of time in the States really trying to break into that market. And he, he wasn't interested in the States at all for a long, long time. And he was a very, very big fish in a very small pond over here. And then I think he hit a natural wall because he just he wasn't interested in, in kissing us and he wasn't interested in playing the game. And he wasn't interested in being mates with all the right people in Hollywood. He didn't really care at all. But I think he's got to that natural point in his career where he has to, to make that leap. But what's interesting about it is that the agents, the managers, the, the celebrities, themselves, they know Rankin, they know the name, but it means something quite different to what it means here and now. It means the same in the States as it did here about 10 years ago. So he's seen as kind of very edgy, very cutting edge, a little bit dangerous. And in fact, you know, quite often when we're talking to um, celebrities about using Rankin, they'll be a little bit nervous because he's that kind of slightly edgy, crazy guy. And over here, of course, he's into his kind of third period. Um, he's, uh, he's at a completely different point in, in his career when he's shooting the Queen of England. In fact, he's probably the only uh, photographer ever to shoot the Queen of England and the Queen of Porn uh, in the same couple of years. Non, mais dégueule pas vraiment. It's the weekend in Rankins in New York for one day only to shoot top fashion model Susan Eldridge for the front cover of the men's style guide, Arena Magazine. One, two, party. I danced all night. I drank 16 years and started up a fight. Susan Eldridge is, a, is an incredibly sexy young fashion model, very, very edgy young fashion model. And what's interesting, it's like, it's like <laughs> putting dark matter and dark matter together with Rankin. Because um, this is a girl who is already completely unafraid of, uh, of taking her clothes off. She has very, very few, if any, inhibitions whatsoever. And you put her with someone like Rankin, who normally is the guy that you get to take people's clothes off if it's slightly problematic. So I actually haven't seen results yet, but I imagine um, um, barely printable. Is, uh, is one way to describe what we're going to get. That's great. That's fucking gorgeous. Hold that. 
Susan LGG is a model, and she's like the hottest, hottest model around at the moment. And she does fashion shoots, she does catwalk. Um, and we, you know, we as a sort of fashion style magazine, she sort of fits perfectly into, into our readership. Just open your mouth a little bit. She's just very unique. She's a very unique person. And I, I'm really attracted to that as a photographer. Like, when you, when you shoot her, it's, it's exciting. And I'm excited, so I guess I'm kind of like probably like running around her trying to get all the right angles um, because I'm getting a bit over overexcited. The cover image is usually shot from like the knee upwards, three quarter length, very simple, clean background. And it's it's the image which is which has that little bit extra, has a great connection with you. So when you're in you know, your news agents buying your magazine. It's that one image which you look at and it grabs your attention, it holds you, it usually has a bit of eye contact. Do you want to do some... mm. Ready, Ben? The way that I work when I look through a lens is I almost defocus what I'm looking at through the lens. So I don't look at specifics. I think a mistake that a lot of photographers make when they take portraits is they're looking for the specifics, the, the, the details. I try and create a situation where the details are already good, they're already there, and then what I do is try and make the person have as much fun as you can, you can have in front of a camera. So when I look for a lens, I'm a lot of the time looking at form, you know, the, the, the way that the person stands within the image, the way that I'm framing it, and I've got to a point where that has become very natural to me. I don't have to think about it too much, and that allows me to focus on my direction and allowing them to, to be, feel at ease and, and express themselves. These are just some Polaroids from the first few setups we've done. We take these to check to see what the light's like and make sure that when it goes to film that everything's right. I don't think any of these are going to be the cover. We don't usually go for headshots for the cover. Um, I think it's just a bit too much clothing for the cover. One of the great things about working with Rankin is that his name seems to act as a kind of oral aphrodisiac and um, whenever you go on a photo shoot with him, simply the mention of his name makes people's clothes fall off. Luckily, in the case of Rune Magazine, it's women's clothes that tend to be falling off. In, in our society today, for some reason, nudity makes people a little uncomfortable on every, every, from every angle. Um, I don't know why, but it does. I really don't know how I make people feel comfortable. I talk to them, I'm interested in them. I don't have a secret weapon. I don't have something that I can really describe or, or explain to, to you. I, I just am interested and fascinated by people. So, and I enjoy the process of taking the photograph and I think that comes across. And I try and make them laugh. I guess I try, if I, if I do anything, I just try and make people laugh. I'm cheeky.